everybody. We're back here with Chris Rock. The, the, the special is called, uh, well, it's, the original was the Tambourine Special in 2018, and now it's a yes. remix, Total Blackout. Yeah. What does that mean? What's, what's, what's a remix of a comedy special? A remix of a comedy special, in this case, there's 33 new minutes that were not in the original special. And some of the orders changed, and I used different takes from different shows. So it's it's kind of different. It's kind of, you know, I, I, when I was initially brought the idea to Netflix, they're like, come on. And then when I they didn't want to do it, when I showed it to them, they were like, hey, this is like a new special. So, and it's, it's you know, I can't do comedy with no audience during the pandemic. That's pretty hard. So Yeah, this, yeah it's kind of hard. Who would it's do that? That would be a dumb thing to try to do. Go do comedy without an audience. Only an idiot uh, would attempt that. What's the I, first somebody, thing you want to do? When you see that audience, what's the first thing you want to do? Do you want to do jokes for them, or do you want to just get naked and jump on them? Because I just want to rub up against people. I just miss human beings. I miss them, too. I'm trying to, trying to get me a bubble. You got to get one of those bubbles. What do you mean, like a hamster bubble, like going down the street? <laughs> The, the, you know, the pods of all the people you're allowed, like you're gonna, you're sharing yeah. your like your viral biome with. You don't have. Yeah, are you all yeah. alone, Chris Rock? I'm not, yeah, my kids left, so I'm like, yeah, I'm kind of alone <laughs> right now. Without the audience, I know you've talked about you've been very open about going to to therapy and how important that is to you. Um, for me, the audience is actually the way I deal with my anxiety. That connection, hearing the laughter of the audience, is kind of calms me down. I go, okay, this thing I thought makes sense to you, and so I, I feel less alone. And, and not having them, I'm, all that anxiety is still internalized. I'm having to imagine it being released to an audience. What does it do to your mental state to not have an audience, Chris Rock? I, I used to abuse an audience in the sense that uh, I would do something in my normal life, and I go, ah, man, you know what, Chris? You don't listen to people. You're, you talk over people. You're rude. You need to apologize. You need to change your ways. And then I would go in front of an audience and they'd give me a standing ovation. I go, I'm not changing nothing. <laughs> I'm obviously right. These people are standing. So quarantine has humbled me, Stephen. Uh-huh. Is it? That's what it's to me. I, I have a, I have a, a rumor I want to run by you. Is, there's a yeah. rumor. Is it true that you were in contention to play George Costanza on Seinfeld? Uh, I just heard that one. I, I mean, there was a lot of NBC talk. There was talk about Seinfeld. There was talk about me being one of the friends at a point. Really? Uh, yes, yes, yes. I would have been the black friend. I'm, that's, that's, that's basically who I am to America anyway at this point. But uh, let's just say the, the, the good people at Seinfeld, they made the right choice. He's good. He's a Amazing. Were there any, when you were younger, were there any pilots or any things that you were part of that didn't go? Like, this is my break. This is the thing that I'm going to do. Like, for me, it was like the Car- Dana Carvey show in a way. It was like, this is the thing that's going to put me on the map, and then it just dissolved after seven shows. Was there a thing that you're like, oh, this, this is the thing. I'm going to be able to ride this out. This is my paycheck. This is my payday. Oh, yeah. I was supposed to be cockroach on the Cosby show. That was supposed to happen where I was Theo's best friend. Okay. And, you know, thank God that didn't happen. You know, think think about the world right now. Bill Cosby's in jail and Snoop Dogg's the number one pitch man in America. <laughs> he hasn't done the pudding yet. I'm waiting for the pudding pops. Oh, man. I just bought, I will buy anything Snoop Dogg sells, okay? I, I just bought a Snoop Dogg quilt. <laughs> I got some gangster sleep. <laughs> some OG sleep. If you don't have a Snoop Dogg quilt, you are sleeping like a bitch. I'll take your word for it. I'll take your word for it. You better get one of them Snoop Dogg quilts, I'm telling you. Yeah. Um, well, I hope I can see you in person. I hope you can actually walk on and hear the cheer of the audience at some time in the future. You know, you know the Ed Sullivan Theater. You know how beautiful I it is love down the there. Ed Sullivan Theater. I love the Ed Sullivan Theater, man. You were here for the last night of Dave's show. I was. I was very fortunate. What was yes. it like? What was it like backstage? It was, you know, <laughs> it was typical Dave not saying a freaking word, 
<laughs> but uh, <laughs> but what about everybody back to the other people? The all the guests. Everybody else was happy. Me, Seinfeld, Julia Louise, Jim Carrey, and I think uh, Steve Martin, I believe. Yeah. We were happy. Letterman was his, his lovely, miserable self. <laughs> I just had a memory of you. I just realized the first time I met you. I, I, the first time I met you was actually, I think it was when the Colbert Report was being announced. It was at some Viacom yes. thing up front, and they announced it, and I'm actually there. I was in an outfit I had to wear for a bit I was doing for The Daily Show that night, like the last bit I ever did before I moved over, and it was you and I think Dennis Leary and John and maybe Janine Garofalo. I mean, we're talking like, yeah. we're talking 15, 16 years ago, and me. And we, they all had us get in front of the step and repeat for a photo. I had seen you, I'd only seen you one other time, and it was a weird movie. It's not a great movie, but you were so funny in that Mike Myers movie, The Love Guru. <laughs> That's, I will not sit here and have you cast aspersions it's oh, fine. I, the, the, the American Film Institute has named that one of the 100 most made I saw movies. It, I, thought, I thought you were hysterical in The Love Guru. I was like, who's this guy? This guy's hysterical. Just, it was just me and Jim Gaffigan <laughs> just hanging out one day. And we, that's all improvised because it was during the writer's strike and there couldn't be a script. So then he oh. said, just go improvise. I would see a movie of just your character from The Love Guru. You should quit the show and just do that guy. That guy was amazing. I'm in. You know what, man? You know, when I come back, we'll, we'll do, can I guess host? Can I, can I, I don't want to guess host. I just want to, No, like, you can guess host. No, no, too late. I accept. I want to just be on I the accept. side. I, wanna, I, I accept, and like I promise Ed I will come back. I want to be Ed McMahon. I just want to sit there and, can I sit there and smoke weed and. <laughs> just like Ed McMahon. Just like Ed McMahon. If, 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 by ha by, if by weed, you mean a Dubuque ham. Do you know what he used to do? He used to do Alpo beef chunk dinner commercials on the old Tonight Show. They'd cut to Ed, and Ed would have, like, a dog in a bowl of Alpo, and they would make Ed sell Alpo while Johnny sat there and smoked and talked to uh, 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 Barbie Benton. Thank you so much for being here. The Ew. Chris Rock Total Blackout, The Tambourine Extended Cut is available tomorrow on Netflix. Check it out, y'all. Chris Rock, everybody.